I wanted to make it an Australian book, right? So I started off before the war, from 1934 till the war started, about two brothers, one looking for the other. That's how the book starts. And it, they go for all sorts of adventures. If you like adventure, well, you get plenty of that in the first part of the book. And then from there, it goes into the war years, right? And then after the war years, it goes into flags of convenience, trade union movement, all that sort of stuff. I've tried to condense in a small book. That's my, how I looked at the industry that I served for 45 years. After drawing on his experiences in the British Merchant Navy, Bill's time on the tugs on Victoria's Western Port brought him into contact with Australian unions for the first time. The first tug I was on was a tug called the Henry Bolte, 68 I think it was. I remember at the time on those tugs down at Western Port, we were just on the base rate and, you know, we worked up to 30 hours without a break just to keep the shipping going. And then we only had a break of six hours and started all over again. That's how it was. Until when the union got us all these wonderful conditions. They got us a system, a leave system, proper roster system. Then we got a salary that the union got us. Yeah. You know, I went immediately on a salary. I think I ended up with about $60,000 a year from $600 a week the union got to say. Bill's book also examines the phenomenon of flag of convenient shipping, having seen firsthand the devastating effect it has on crews around the world. Two or three months after the war, I was on a particular ship, Shell Oil. I call them the exploiters because she was flying the Panamanian flag and she was registered in Panama, right? What they did, they got rid of us, and the next minute, they employ Filipinos, right? Third world country crews onto the ship. We was put off, you know, and that applied to many of our return servicemen from the Merchant Navy. They ended up with no job, they had to go ashore, and we lost all those skills, everything. Bill has also witnessed flag of convenient ships decimate the Australian shipping industry. And in his book, he outlines why maintaining a strong Australian fleet would not only boost jobs, it also has great economic, environmental and defence benefits. During the war in Australia, we had 250 ships. We're lucky if we got 30 now. And here we are, a nation surrounded by 12,000 miles of water. What are we doing? I remember Kim Beasley saying we should have a Coast Guard, but you know, for the small amount of people we got, it would be a luxury to have all these Coast Guard ships around our coastline. The way for it is, as we know, our roads are cluttered by these heavy transports, and the emissions that the, the heavy transports is 84, emissions where if it went on a ship it would only be 20. Now what we should have is roll on roll off ships carrying these heavy transports. You have a helicopter pad for the Navy to be able to come as these gunships around our coastline. So it'd be, you'll be doing two things. You not only have a strong merchant navy, but you have a strong navy as well, working together. That's the answer. As well as launching the book, Bill and others have spent many years campaigning for an Australian Merchant Navy Day so that the sacrifice of personnel who died at a higher rate than any of the three military services will be finally recognised. It wasn't a well-known fact that merchant seafarers died in those numbers during the Second World War because of the War Secrecy Act. And one of the other great ironies is that it was kept such a great secret that it took us years and years and years and years to have merchant seafarers recognised for what they were, war heroes. Once again, it was the MUA yeah. that supported us all along. 
about Merchant Navy Day. For six long years, they took us around, this is the Howard government, round and around and around in circles. I remember writing to Kevin Rudd when he's in the opposition about it. And I got letters back from him, supporting us. And what happened when they got into government, one of the, one of the first things they did was to get the proclamation for Merchant Navy Day. And it was only through the very hard work of the Seamen's Union and the Merchant Navy Association and uh, very, very many people that uh, had the willingness and the determination together with their union and, and in a collaborative effort to make sure that the recognition for those seafarers uh, was given because they were war heroes and are war heroes and we wouldn't be living in the country today if we didn't have them. My purpose for writing this book was for my comrades who lost their lives in the Second World War. Blokes I knew, and there was many Australian and New Zealanders on these ships, by the way, hundreds of them. Not one of their names is on the cenotaph up in Canberra, not one of them. The great thing is, Bill, that you continue, uh, your whole generation, and particularly this book, is going to be an important component in continuing to mobilise and uh, us to make sure that all of the lessons of the past aren't going to be lost and the Australian Merchant Navy is going to serve this country for many, many generations to come. Can you put your hands together again for this wonderful effort done by Bill? And everybody, put your hand in your kick and let's get a copy of this book.